it's Sean Lamb for Streaming Media Producer. We're here at NAB 2013 at the Black Magic booth. I'm here with Stuart Ashton and Black Magic, a bit earlier on, had their press conference. They did it again. They, they shocked us. They brought out a lot of new products. We're going to touch on a few of them here. So the first one is the ATEM 4K production uh, studio here. So tell us a, a, an overview of this product here. Of course, Sean. Yeah, I think that, I think that one of the things which is a big theme for us this year is, is three distinct areas. The first one being Ultra HD and 6 gig SDI, and then obviously some camera news, and obviously our DaVinci Resolve news as well. Um, what's exceptional about Ultra 4K is that we're talking about a resolution that is, um, which is which is four times the size of HD. So Ultra HD is um, is, is basically being seen a lot through some of the new uh, panel manufacturers. So at CES earlier on this year, we saw a number of Ultra HD screens. Um, but people are starting to talk to us about well, what about broadcasting? What about delivery? You know, what we're going to do with regards to actually getting our content together and actually distributing that out. So we've been working quite intensely with um, other manufacturers to um, use the standard 6 gig SDI. Now tell us about that standard. So this is a live video switcher that works on 6 gig SDI. What is that for the uninformed? Well, well 6 gig SDI is, it looks identical to current SDI, except it's four times the bandwidth. So if you're working in a 4K resolution, there's no need now to have four independent SDI cables or dual link SDI cables at three gig each. You can now use a single um, SDI cable, which is six gig bandwidth. And what's also nice about that is that it also gives you the ability to be able to put HD and SD video down it, which means you're not only limiting yourself to one resolution type. So, so that means that when you work in a professional environment, in a broadcast environment, you're needing those long distances, you're needing more robust cables. That's where, that's where SDI really has always been prominent in the, in the marketplace. Um, but I think that obviously 1.4 HDMI is also important too because we can now obviously deliver um, our outputs um, to monitors, you know, which are relatively inexpensive um, compared to some of the other monitors out there today. Okay. So, uh, can so, you tell us a bit about the, the IOs on here, so the inputs and... and yeah. Yeah. So, so all of our products now which are on the 4K range, we're, we've actually in, incorporated 6 gig SDI. And that, that's the same exactly for the A10 production switcher 4K. This is an eight channel production switcher. So it's got four HDMI inputs and it's got four SDI inputs. All each of those four SDI inputs are all six gig SDI. Um, what's nice about this unit is that this integrates perfectly with our HyperX Studio Pro, it works perfectly with our Ultra Studio 4K, it works with our brand new audio monitor, it works also well with our new um, studio converter, but also what's important is it works with our new camera, which is our um, Blackmagic Cinema production camera 4K. So that's one of the things you guys are doing is, is not just trying to take one piece of the production workflow, but you really have solutions from the camera acquisition right to the recording of the archive or even the hardware that helps on the, the streaming side. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think that one of the things I, I touched on it earlier before is that 4K is here today. You know, people are working in a 4K environment. You know, we, we do a number of different shows, including shows like, um, you know, sort of ISE and Infocom. Um, and a lot of the events guys, um, the AV space, is already delivering 4K to large screens. The one thing that people have always said to us is, well, what about transmission? You know, because, you know, how is that going to be delivered to us in our home? Well, YouTube's doing it. You know, YouTube 4K, you can go, you can go and actually deliver, you know, and broadcast over the internet 4K already. So what we're trying to do is put together this, this, this collaborative workflow of 4K Ultra HD, HD products that now give you the ability to capture, switch, record, and play back all those 4K resolutions. Okay. Um, so this unit here, we've, we can, the HDMI, is it restricted to 1920, 1080 HD, or does it accept any of the 4K HD? So it'll also do Ultra HD as well. And then output-wise, have we got, got rid of all the analog standard definition inputs on here? So, so as we look on the back of the unit, it's SDI and HDMI output again. Okay. So, so we're keeping the unit um, entirely with the digital connections on the back of the unit. What's also nice about the unit is on the front of it, you'll see that we've now incorporated an LCD screen. So you can now see your, 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 your OX out or your program out. What this now gives you the ability to do is that on the button with all of these, well, sorry, on the front of the unit with all these buttons, I can now control the OX output which means that if I wanted to make that aux output a program output, I could actually switch the unit on the front of, on the actual front of the, of the, of the main plate. Um, we've also got media pools in there as well. Okay, and, and similar to the, uh, the entire ATEM line, you can either use the software control panel or a production switcher via Ethernet or I guess through a network there. Yeah, I mean, it's, again, it's all about having flexibility. Uh, it's all about ensuring that what we do is we have 
Um, we have a different ways to work with different people. Um, we always envisage that these units need to be small and physical size because then you could build them into OB trucks or into small racks, into flyaway kits. And when we talk about the control method, we always thought to ourselves, well, what if you wanted to control on a laptop or you, know, you don't have the space to use a large panel? But then also there's the guys who want to put it in a gallery, they want to put it on a desk. Um, with this now, we've added a third option. We now have the ability to control the ox output on the front of the unit, which now means that you actually don't need either of those things. Um, so it really just comes about what's fit for purpose, what's right for each person. Now this is a one rack unit. Um, when we, and if we look at the front, we've got an LCD display on there. There's no audio display on there at this point? There isn't on this product, but what we have announced at the show is a Blackmagic audio monitor. Um, that again is a six gig solution. It's a fully dedicated audio monitoring solution, which was designed in video in mind. Um, so that has VU meters on the front, it has built-in speakers, it has the ability to be able to see the visual, you know, see the, see the audio representation of what's coming through. It has HDMI on there and SDI on there as well. And it has an analog or a headphone jack, so we can actually hear the audio. So it has aviation headphone connection on the front, um, which, which means it enables you to actually um, listen to all that audio coming through, but also it has, a, um, it has a knob on the front which gives you the ability to ride the audio up and down so you can listen to the volume, um, you can increase the volume, decrease the volume. Now, if we look at this unit, compare it to the Atom 1ME. Uh, the 1ME is a two-rack unit, has three aux outputs. This one is a one-rack unit, and it has, it's a single aux unit, so that's one of the big differences. That's right, yeah. Uh, and then the 1ME has the USB 3.0 output. Does this have anything similar? This doesn't have 3.0 on the, on the output. I mean, this is really um, meant to sit somewhere between the, um, the television studio and the 1ME, um, but obviously with the increased functionality of 4K, which is massive. Yeah, fantastic. All right, thank you very much, Dirt. Thank you very much.